What's up guys, it's Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're gonna to be breaking down three wide receiver tips that will change your game, okay? So these are three specific things that I wish I knew when I was coming up as a player that I think you guys could get a ton of value from. So I hope this video helps you guys out, but also, fellas, if you're a wide receiver and you want a day-to-day, step-by-step training schedule with all the things you need to do on the field and in the gym, check out our ultimate wide receiver training schedule. Very first link in that description below, fellas. What you'll get access to is a four-week-long on-field wide receiver training schedule where we break down 28 days of workouts, specific sets and reps. It's all the drills you need to do to work on your route running, press releases, hands, everything that ties into the receiver position. And we give you an instructional video where we break down each exercise. And also, fellas, you get access to a four-week-long wide receiver gym training program. So all the things you need to do in the gym as a wide receiver. So check out that very first link in the description below if you want a day-to-day schedule for wide receivers. Let's get started with this video. So number one thing here, number one tip that will change your game as a wide receiver is where do you angle your stem when you're going up against zone coverage, okay? So so now, this specific coverage right here that we are seeing, this is what everybody sees in youth ball and high school ball and sometimes even a lot in college ball, right? We talk a lot about press releases. We're going to get into that later with this video, but this is the look, this zone coverage look. So how should you be trying to attack this as a wide receiver, right? So we got this DB who's how far is he? Probably about what, like seven, eight yards off, right? Sometimes guys will go 10 in high school, which I think is extremely stupid. But when you get this specific look, what should your thought process be as a wide receiver? So you see how McLaurin, the number one thing you have to do is we got to try to close the distance with this guy, right? And you see how immediately when we come off the line of scrimmage, he's backpedaling out of there. Now, a lot of people like to ask, oh, well, coach, I do this and I come off the line of scrimmage and I'm running out of DB and zone coverage, but he doesn't move, right? But when this deep, when you have that mindset that I'm going to make this DB move or I'm just going to dust him on a fade when we come back with a fade the next play, that's when that DB starts to bail out of there. So you need to make sure that my number one goal when I'm facing this coverage is that I'm closing the distance. But the number one tip that I can give you guys is attack that front hip, right? So when that DB's turning and he's facing the inside, you were trying to attack this hip because that sets up so many things. When you're going straight at his hip like that, he has to move. He's not just going to let you run right into him, but also what that sets up is that creates a blind spot, right? So when you're closing the distance like this and you're making him uncomfortable, that will create a blind spot that you could sell a route to if you have an inside breaking route, but also that will get him to overcommit on any kind of inside break. So you see how McLaurin's person upfield and he runs this post route, right? He runs to the post, but you see when we close the distance and we make this DB uncomfortable and he's bailing out of there and I make a sudden break to the post and I actually commit to this thing, that forces a reaction out of him. So it's all about that stem. Where are you going to angle that stem? Because a lot of receivers, when they'll run a post, they'll just run a lazy post. This DB will be off like this. They'll just take this lazy inside route, and then maybe they'll break it out because he's running a post out. Or maybe they got to run a fade, or maybe they got to run a comeback, and they'll just run away from this guy. The number one thing you have to do is you got to make sure that when you're coming off the line against this coverage, you're closing the distance, and you're attacking this hip to make him uncomfortable to set up the blind spot and to try to get him to overcommit on any kind of inside move. So again, McLaurin's running a double move here, and you see, he commits to it. He gets his hips and his shoulders there. This DB bites on it because, again, he's in an uncomfortable spot. And then we're able to create a decent amount of separation to be able to get some get away from this DB. That's a great job there. So number one tip that will change your game as a wide receiver. When you were going up against this type of zone coverage, you want to attack that front hip, close the distance, don't run away from him, and make that DB uncomfortable. Let's watch the thing again full speed one more time. Great job coming at him. Great job attacking that hip. And then obviously selling this post route, running this blaze out, and making this play. Okay, so now, second tip that I wish I would have known coming up as a wide receiver is something that I wish I would have implemented to my receivers that I train a little bit sooner is stepping outside the DB's frame. So let's watch the thing here from Amari Cooper. You see how he works this double move, right? So this double move, the main thing I want you to see about this is there's a million different ways to run a slant, right? There's a, there's a clip that Amari Cooper posted last night, and that's one of the things that he said. He said there's like a ton of different releases you can use for um, running a slant route, and it's true. You have an inside shade DB, you could hit him with a diamond release, you could hit him with a slide release, you could do something like this where you hit him with a one-two, you could do a wide step release, but one thing remains consistent is that all elite NFL wide receivers, at least the guys off the line of scrimmage that are elite, threaten the guy vertical first, okay? So you see how when Cooper comes off the line, yeah, he does this little hesitation skip, right? And then he throws. But you see when he is able to sell this route, he is completely stepping outside of this DB's frame, right? Now, this is one of those steps that a lot of people are very critical about when I talk about it, right? They say that, oh, well, when you step out wide like this, that's you're outside of your frame. You have no balance. You have no explosion. But that's that's only if you don't bring your upper half because let's talk about it. Where's the DB supposed to be watching? He ain't supposed to be watching your feet, right? He's supposed to be watching your hips. The hips will supposedly tell him the truth, right? But if I'm as a wise wide receiver, what I'm thinking is I'm going to throw my hip into it. You see how Cooper's throwing his hip. He's bringing his upper half with the cut. That's how you guys can step outside of the DB's frame, but inside of your frame. So the second tip that every wide receiver has got to do if they want to change their game, they want to change their game off the line, press releases, is you got to start stepping outside the DB's frame. You actually have to 
to threaten him vertical. Because let's talk about the IQ of this movement, right? So I got a DB who's inside shade, right? He's inside shade, inside leverage on the goal line. So what does he not want me to do? He does not want me to cross his face. He does not want me to do exactly what Cooper does in this situation. So he's trying to seal the inside and he's trying to play the fade. But you see all this grass that he's got to cover there. Because normally what we do is we would come at him, we'd attack his leverage, we'd square him up like so, and then we'd go run a fade. We'd just be a foot race to the back corner and the quarterback would go throw this thing up. So that's what we are trying to sell. So I come at him, I make it look somewhat similar, I square him up, I'm patient, I close the distance, and then I throw to the outside. And this is what's selling vertical. There comes a point in every single rep by a DB where he has to commit to a specific route that you're doing. And you stepping outside of his frame like this, you bringing your upper half like this, is what's going to get him to jump or it's going to get him to at least just commit and maybe shift some weight to that outside leg. And you see, we get his hips to turn, that's what sets up the hand technique. That's a perfect example of the why your feet are more important than your hands. If you guys can set up a DB with your feet, actually step outside of his frame, actually get him to move, that's going to get him off that platform. And then this hand technique becomes simple, fellas. You just got to swat him off to get his hips to lock out. And then you could get a ton of separation. And this is a ton of separation on the goal line. So the second thing, all wide receivers have to do this. Make sure we're stepping outside the DB's frame and make sure we are threatening him vertical. Let's watch this thing again full speed one more time. Great job by Cooper making all the releases look the same, selling like he's running a fade and then obviously accelerating out over the middle. All right, guys, if you have not heard, we are going to be coming to Arizona for a quarterback and wide receiver training clinic on October 2nd and October 3rd. So it's all going to cover all the specific aspects of the quarterback and wide receiver training um, just for that position to help you guys on the field, to help you guys during the season. And we're also bringing in a speed coach to help you guys with your 40-yard dash mechanics. So October 2nd and October 3rd, if you guys are in the Arizona area, we would love to have you out. So check out that second link in the description below if you guys want to register. We really appreciate it. We would love to see you out there. Again, if you guys have any questions, please don't hesitate to leave those in the comments below. I will make sure to answer those. Let's get back to this video, okay? So now, third tip that all wide receivers got to do to make sure they change their game is double moves are a big part of the game. Double moves are one of the things that can get you a lot of separation and can score you a lot of touchdowns, but how do you run those specifically? The third thing that wide receivers got to do is you got to make sure you commit the big three on a double move. So let's watch this thing full speed. So Lamb's running this corner post from the outside, right? So he does a perfect, this is a perfect example of how you guys want to commit the big three and how that can um, ultimately get you the most separation possible. So what is the big three? The big three is eyes, big three. So eyes, number one, number two, body language, number three, speed and stride. Okay. So if you could do all three of those things to the first portion of the move, that's what is most likely to get a DB to jump on this thing, right? So now when I'm breaking back to this corner, you see a lamb, what does he do here? What's the first thing that snaps? Eyes. Now the eyes coming around will help you bring the hips and the shoulders, but you got to make sure that you are ripping your arms there because I've seen it too many times. Guys will sell with their eyes, but their inside shoulder and their inside hip will be drifting to the inside. And if I'm a DB and I see that, I'm not committing on this break. So you got to make sure we are fully committed with eyes and upper half. Everything above the waist is going towards that break point, right? You don't even necessarily have to look back at the quarterback, but you just got to commit to it to get this DB to jump. Now, the third thing is what stride, right? You got to have some speed. You got to have some stride. So what a lot of people do is they'll break here and because they're not confident with their breaks, they're not confident with that stability at the top of the route, they'll take choppy steps. So what they'll do is they'll break and instead of taking these full strides like Lamb does, they'll be about back here. They'll probably be two yards less and they took those three choppy steps and the DB's just going to sit on this route because A, that takes away speed. B, that doesn't sell the route. So that's a perfect example of how your eyes got to be there, hips and shoulders got to be there, and we got to be in stride. And when you can do all three of those things, that gives you that like sudden break, right? Everybody loves to talk about, oh, you want to have sudden feet. You want to have explosive move break at the top of the route. This sudden break right here is what you need. And how you get there is by committing eyes, shoulders, hips, and being sudden. So the third thing that wide receivers need to do to change their game, make sure, fellas, that we commit the big three on any kind of double move. And that goes for any route, however. Like, let's say you're running a comeback. For this entire stem, your hips and your shoulders should be committed. You should be in stride and your eyes should be vertical until that break point. So make sure that we have the big three anytime I am running routes. Watch the thing again, full speed one more time. Great job by Lamb selling the corner and then obviously popping this thing back off to make a play over the middle. All right, guys, we want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you guys have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to leave those in the comments below. I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Always appreciate the feedback. Always appreciate the things you guys have to say. It's always great hearing from you guys. And again, fellas, if you want an ultimate wide receiver training schedule, all the specific things that wide receivers need to do on the field and in the gym to take their game to that next level, check out that very first link in the description below, fellas. Hope you guys could check that out. I'll see you guys next time.